Are you ultra orthodox? Because you sound like a normal person. I hear comments along those lines quite often. Who are the ultra orthodox? In the reality, nobody knows for sure because ultra orthodox is not an official designation, but more like a colloquial term. When calling somebody ultra orthodox, people often try to give this name a negative connotation. Sometimes the Bavichers, like me, are called ultra orthodox, sometimes not. We will try to figure out where this name could possibly come from. Avraham was the first person to believe in one God, and he also gave us another new idea that resulted from his belief in one God. Historians say that religions around him at that time did not have any requirements for their followers for their everyday behavior. Outside of their rituals, they had no directives for their actions. Avraham believed that our behavior should follow certain standards. Many religions that appeared later on also began to create norms of behavior for their adherents. From here came what later became known as the moral code. When you are introduced to any religion or secular ideology, first, you probably need to find out what are its requirements of behavior for its followers. This, I suppose, will be its main defining factor. If it does not insist on any norms of behavior, which unfortunately we see more in modern religious movements and secular ideologies, then they take us back to the times of before Abraham. If any school of thought takes its norms of behavior seriously, then of course these norms will be discussed and recorded in great details. Otherwise, it will allow them to be just philosophical concepts suspended in the air without any practical applications. For example, if your ideology tells you to respect your parents, then it must determine whether you must obey your parents if they demand you do something that hurts you. And what if they tell you to do something that hurts them? And what if their demands contradict other rules imposed by your school of thought? If the ideology that you are looking at is prohibiting killing, then it should explain whether I'm allowed to kill an attacker. If I am permitted to kill one person in order to save two people. And what if someone asks me to kill him? Am I allowed to kill him then? Every school of thought that claims to have standards has to answer all of these questions. Therefore, in Orthodox Judaism, there is a book called Shulchan Aruch, which describes the norms of behavior for those following Judaism. There is a lot of literature explaining the reasons for, this, for these decisions, but Shulchan Aruch records only the laws themselves. Every set of rules always has in it what is forbidden, what is allowed, and also it is inevitable to have some gray area of in between questions which are not clear. This applies, for example, to medicine. Every doctor will say that physical activity is necessary, but one will tell you to exercise every day, and another one will tell you that every other day is good enough. We also see it in legal matters. There are things which are clearly per permitted, there are things which are clearly prohibited, and then there are things which are left to judges' discretion, and so on. We find the same thing in the Jewish law. Shulchan Aruch describes what is allowed, what is forbidden, and like any court of law, it has gray areas of questionable actions. Thus, it provides a range of choice for those who want to be stricter 
in their observance or less strict within the framework of the Jewish law, of course. All those who call themselves Orthodox Jews strive to live according to the instructions of Shulchan Aruch. Those of them who follow the stricter standards within this gray area are probably the ones who are called ultra-Orthodox.